Hello and welcome to another What's Up Wednesday. Hard to believe another week has flown by. Welcome to episode 64. If you're new to the crowd, howdy, my name is Scott. Howdy, my name is Scott. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Go Small, Live Large, all about the Class B RV roaming around North America lifestyle. If you're a familiar face, let's give a few shout outs to those folks. It's just a delight to have you here on a Wednesday night. Uh, we got a big show for you tonight. We do every week, but this one's going to be kind of fun because we're going to give some demos, and I love giving demos, uh, assuming everything holds up. My internet connection is not awesome. I'm outside of Sarasota at a Walmart parking lot. I'm street camping with um, at a friend's from uh, dear friend from Chicago's house. So uh, let's say hello to a few folks, and then we will jump into the meat of the matter tonight. I um, always like to say hello to, to the audience friends. So here's Mark. Apparently he's at Forest City. That's where Winnebago's headquartered, getting some warranty work done. Um, Tuxedo has just decided to wake up, so I'm sure we'll see him tonight. Um, if you have a question, this is really all about your question. So if you can help me out, find your question more readily, uh, place three asterisks followed by three question marks. That helps me see your question and it gets it answered. If we don't get it answered... Um, then we collect these, and then um, occasionally we put those questions to uh, a video. So questions do get answered at some point. Um, Libation Live, yes, uh, you will not be uh, pleased. Some of you, others won't care. It's about uh, effectiveness. Libation Live is boxed wine tonight. <laughs> so um, Mark Williams, good to see you, sir. Uh, so sorry, can't, uh, can't uh, chance your topic over the next few days in freezing weather. Tank heaters would eat my volt assist. Yes. Um, anything electrically consumptive in the van, you want to monitor that very carefully. I would not recommend electric heat nor your warming pads. Uh, we got Jim in the house, Rochester. Good to see you. Um, Agnes from Chicago, representing Poland. Doesn't Poland have the first or the second largest, first or second largest Polish community outside of Poland itself? Having lived in Chicago for a number of years, quite a few. Um, it's always fun to run to the, the Polish uh, folks. And there's a great smorgasbord um, in suburban Chicago. Um, yeah, I can't think of the name of it. It's Polish smorgasbord, something so funny. Dave, look at this. Here's a congratulations for Dave. Full time in his van, uh, 79 days. Way to go, sir. That is a big milestone. Um, past two months, so congratulations. Things must be working. I've been in Joplin, Missouri. Um, that's a cool little town. A lot of history. Route 66 runs through Joplin, Missouri. Rich is in the house. Good to see you, sir. Stream at Illinois. Um, Mark Williams is answering the question. Our topic tonight, off-grid. Uh, how long can you go? And it's, he's kind of right here. Uh, there's some caveats for sure. We're going to cover that tonight. going to show you some of this in spades uh, with my demo. So uh, thank you, Mark. Um, Frisco, Texas, in the house. Good to see you. Here's Jane and Roger. Good to see you. Appreciate you being here. And Timothy... Miller from Columbus, Ohio, and Gary in Texas. Van Liberty. What's up, Van Liberty? Scott Dale's in the house. Hey, April. Good to see you. Hopefully your fridge is working now. That would be awesome. And Alaska in the house. We haven't seen Alaska for a while. So thank you, Jim, for joining us from Alaska. And um, so let me go through the show content tonight. What we're going to do, um, we go for an hour. If you're joining us for the first time, um, kind of call yourselves out. Put new new in the in your question and we want to address um, or recognize you as a new um, audience member to What's Up Wednesday. We do this every Wednesday, 6 p.m. Central. Here's our show tonight. Let me zoom in for you. So we're going to talk about uh, going off-grid. An audience friend, audience viewer wanted to know how long can I go off uh, lithium. She had some information. She was a little confused. I'm going to try and address that tonight. About 35 after we hit a van place, I've got a Cracker Barrel recommendation for you. And as I gave the uh, tip off, uh, we're doing Libation Live at about 45 after the hour. Yes, it's boxed wine. But, you know, there's a specific reason for it in van life. Uh, we'll cover that. So a uh, big show again tonight. And, of course, it's all about your questions. And uh, we want to get those answered um, as we go through the evening. I just want to remind folks, if you're not aware, we do have stickers available. Um, sales have slowed down just a little bit. And Kyle's mom, Bak Ba, is going like, where's the stickers? And I'm like, okay, we'll talk about stickers. And uh, we have a survey that says we have three questions tonight. And um, it kind of got political on one of the questions. I had no intention of that. Who knew, right? This is a crazy world we live in these days. But, um, and again, it's all about your questions. So get those rolling in, and um, we'll get those answered to the best of my ability. Um, 
some things that are on my mind, and we'll go for just another minute or two here is, sorry, get this off screen, is, um, so I left home base uh, on Saturday of, I guess, this week. Um, and it doesn't feel like I'm back on the road full time, um, but I've got about seven more days in Florida, and then I'm into Georgia, staying about a week in Savannah, Georgia, and then up the East Coast. So what's top of mind for me lately, and if you have questions about this, um, route planning, harvest hosts, boondocker welcome, campground fullness, gasoline prices, um, air conditioning, temperature management, um, and when you know it's time for a trip. <laughs> and did you see the video by Where the Russos, one of my one of my favorite mentors, have decided to purchase some property and they are now off the road, not doing full-time RVing anymore. After six years, they started in a Heimer Active a van, and that's where I got my cred um, started with, with the Russos. And uh, so if any of that is of interest, I would love to talk about that because that stuff is top of mind for me. But um, we got a couple questions coming in, and then we'll hit our topic of the night. So if you came in for the thumbnail, uh, how long can I go off grid on lithium? Um, stay tuned for just another minute or two. You don't want to um, – we'll get right to that. Catman Dude's got a question. Howdy, Scott. Just installed LED headlight kit on ProMaster. Working great so far. But requires um, 3D custom 3D printed adapters. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, the ProMaster is kind of using the old school lighting. Um, they're up high, so they give a wide range of um, illumination. But they use the old kind of yellowish headlights. Um, I'm sure those will be uh, remedied in the uh, new 2023 ProMaster model. Um, I'm eager to get my hands on one of those so we can kind of see what's what's up with that. But congratulations. I uh, would love to know more about that. Um, very good. Uh, let's see. So uh, Larry's in the house. Good to see you, sir. Uh, and he got three three of the van stickers. So thank you for that. I appreciate that. And Pam is in the house. San Antonio, Texas, one of my favorite towns in Chicago. Yes, David in Chicago, Long Lake, Michigan, uh, where things are warming up a bit, I think. And then April has a point here, three days in Arizona weather off grid uh, on driveway surfing the best. Yeah, it's kind of what I'm doing too. All right, so let's hit our topic of the week. And, um, oh, so let me do this first. Hey, uh, uh, let's just organize tonight. Um, if you're having a great day, hit the thumb up button. Sure do appreciate that. Where am I coming at you from? That would be Sarasota, Florida. I'm curious if you've been to Sarasota. It is a charming City by the Sea, I guess, and um, they have an amazing a marina and tiki bar downtown and a really charming historic downtown and um, some just some great beaches. Um, it's just a little north of Siesta Key, which is an amazing beach, boys and girls, and I'm driveway camping tonight at a friend's house. Pretty warm here. Um, it's going to be 60 overnight. It's been the lower 50s, which is perfect, um, but it's been um, middle 90s or middle, middle 80s. And then it's cooling down. So I've been running AC basically 24-7, not plugged in since um, Monday. Monday? Sunday. Sunday. Um, all the days blend together. So but the country's kind of warming up, um, but not fast enough for some of you, right? <laughs> and um, let's know where you're watching from. There was a country called out last week, and it was in the chat, and I missed it. So I apologize for that. If I see it tonight, I'm going to write it down. Um, so we did have a new country last week, but I, I missed uh, capturing it. Um, all right. So guests coming up, let's uh, get into that real fast. So, uh, April 20th, we've got the Airbnb and how it combines with the RV lifestyle. Uh, my partner Kyle is going to be our guest. Um, I got to tell you the house we've been working on since, uh, end of December has been a home run smash hit already booked out for about two, almost three months now and bookings into next year, which is pretty amazing because it ain't cheap. And I'm like, score. <laughs> uh, Wingham, I have a meeting with these guys on Friday to talk about when they're coming on the show. Uh, my guess, it's going to be an early May uh, time frame, but we'll announce that next week after I have the meeting. And of course, Embassy RV is um, going to be on on April 22, Trading Medics of VP. They do Class B RVs very different. He's got some really positive news on chassis, so you don't want to miss that. And um, they do things vastly different than most of the other guys. So if you're into van build-outs without wood, and um, that are very stealthy. Uh, don't miss Terry, the van pro. You can ask him anything on April 22. Okay, with that, I think we're going to roll into our question topic of the night. Let me just check this fast. Please hold. Yes, so let's go here and here. 
And here is the um, here's the topic of the night. Well, the topic for for the thumbnail, I guess. Uh, it comes from a viewer question. Let me zoom in here for you and bring her question up because uh, it's a good question. Pam wants to know. Um, yes, I have a question. I have a KL. That'd be a Travado Winnebago Travado KL on order. I saw a video with the owner of an American Patriot van. Uh, American Patriot is the van builder. And he said that if you plan to stay off grid for three days, that lithium is not for you. A generator would be your best bet. Pam was bummed. She wants to know what's the longest you've stayed put and didn't use the AC. And that is a really juicy question. Um, I got some answers for you. I think it, it really depends on a number of conditions. Let me give my answer here to the best of my ability. And Mark kind of topped us, uh, or teed this up a little bit for us. And for electrical, without having to run the air conditioner, you can kind of go indefinitely, not moving by running a charge cycle every so often. I put this little graph together. Uh, hopefully this makes sense. And um, so my Volta battery is 8,600 watt hours. That's how much energy is stored in the battery. Well, the top column is the, the mode that the uh, inverter and what's going on is happening. The middle row is watts consumed by uh, the device. <laughs> and then how much time is needed to empty the battery to about zero. So let me try and explain what I mean by all this. And then I got a couple of graphs to show you and then a demo. because so I think it's important to understand with a good quality lithium system like Volta, even like Lithionix, um, the magic is in the density of the power that goes into the battery in a short amount of time that you then draw from over a longer period of time. So again, I'll put this graph back up so you can see it. So if we look at the, um, the light blue column with a full battery and I have my inverter off. The inverter, as you know, is what turns direct current DC into alternating current AC that runs the microwave, the TV, the air conditioner, and the 110 volt outlets. With the inverter off, running in DC mode only, so only the lights, only the water pump, only the max air fan is running, I consume about 100 watts per hour in that mode. And with a full battery, I can sit still and not have to worry about charging anything for anywhere. I've gone as far as five days, not being in the van, but flew away. and came back to a van with still 15% left in the battery. Um, if I'm living in the van, not moving, don't need the air conditioning, but I'm using the pump and the fridge is going in and out. So there's a little consumption there. Uh, it's usually three to four days. Um, not moving, not putting any energy into the pack. So that's kind of the magic. And then if we look at the next column, the darker blue, with the inverter on, that would be the alternating current mode, but no air conditioning, the inverter by itself draws 300 watts by being in a state of readiness of turning on the microwave, turning on the coffee pot, turning on the TV, turning on the air conditioner, and to be in that state of readiness but not running those appliances I can last about a day, about 24 hours. Why does Volta put such a big inverter into the system? It's 3,600 watts in, uh, a watt inverter. You can have a shore power experience anywhere, including the Walmart parking lot I'm in tonight. This program tonight is powered by Volta. Air conditioning and that, and I can turn the microwave on, I can run the coffee pot, I can get the Instapot pot that I no longer carry with me turned on, up to 3,600 watts. That's the magic of the system itself. Now let me shift back to the dark blue column with the inverter on, so we're in alternating current mode with the AC running and the compressor running. That's where the draw is. Air conditioning with the compressor running runs or draws 1,200 watts per hour. And if I have the compressor on consistently on, meaning it doesn't turn off, it's always on the compressor. I get about seven hours off my full battery. How do I get 12 hours? I dial up the temperature so the compressor runs less, and that's how I get 12 hours like I'm doing right now. What does this mean at the end of the day? You're like, what? I didn't want a math lesson tonight. People are dropping out already. Um, what this means is by sitting still, if I need energy, like I, I drove an hour today, I've done two one hour charge sessions, but I'm running the, the air conditioning 24 seven because it's hot, the van's in the sun. But if I'm in 
direct current mode, DC only, I don't need to do that at all. That's the big difference. So, and to the customers or to, to your friend's uh, comment on the, on, the, on, the, on the video here, um, he's right in a sense and he's very wrong in another sense. So if you plan to stay upgrade for three days for lithium, a generator would, would not be your best, a generator would be your best bet. Um, what I'm trying to convey is the difference between a generator and a lithium, like a Volta lithium system. You put energy in, one hour puts in 30%, another hour puts in another 30%. So I can go from 20 to full basically in two hours and run the AC for the duration of that. And by the way, run the AC while the engine is charging or while I'm driving. The difference, the huge difference with the generator is the generator always has to run. So while I'm making noise for two hours, the generator is making noise to run the AC for 24 hours. She's talking about direct current mode here. So um, in direct current mode, I can go as I showed for many days. Let me see if I can show you some graphs. Hopefully that is making some sense um, it gets complicated and, and without seeing it, um, it it's, it's kind of hard to get your head wrapped around until you actually see it and experience it. So I got some graphs for you here. No, 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 don't do that. <laughs> Tuxedo. Thanks. Um, so what we're looking at here is the air conditioning is operating off the battery. That is the red line. Um, and you can see it's consuming the peak draw. Um, about middle of the, uh, to the right middle of the chart is 1,228 watts. Um, I was stationary. I was not um, charging. The middle box says AC operating off battery plus charge on demand. I'm running the engine to charge the battery stationary, parked in the shade, and I'm putting in 3,000 watts, even though I'm consuming 1,200 for the air conditioning. Let me show you this one more time. This will be a little more interesting to you maybe. So what you're looking at here is the green is positive watts going into the battery. Red is negative watts coming out to run an appliance. So what you're seeing is as I'm driving to charge, I'm putting in, in this case, 5,000 was the peak. And normally I'm about seven to 9,000 watts going into the battery. Even while I'm driving, I'm still putting a ton of energy in so that when I arrive at my destination, I have a full battery. Oops. So again, it gets a little like, what are you talking about? So let me see if I can demonstrate this fast. I think I have a demo. Yeah, let's do this. Um, I'm going to show you the AC running. The compressor just uh, kicked on. We'll switch screens. If this is too much, we can change topics. I know it gets kind of wonky. Um, and speaking of wonky, uh, there's something weird with my date. Uh, okay, so let me look at this. So this is the Volta app. I've got it connected um, via USB to my um, iPad. Um, what I want to show you here is, again, the consumption. So that's my state of charge currently, 65%. And what it's saying is with the compressor on 100%, which is running right now, um, I'm good till about 11 o'clock tonight. So let me show I'm going to tap a little button here, and this shows you the EKG of the system. So uh, again, when the compressor turns off, it's consuming about 400 watts because the inverter's on. And when the AC, the AC compressor just turned off, so we'll see this change here in just a second. There you see it spike. So obviously, obviously consuming less energy. Um, what I'm going to do is to address the question specifically is how long can I go by not moving by turning off the AC and turning off the compressor or the uh, inverter? Okay, let me change to this app here. This is the Coleman Mock app. Hope you're using this in your rig. Um, let me go to full screen so you're not looking at me while looking down. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to set this to off there. You see that? So off. So we're going to turn the AC off. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the app and I'm going to turn the inverter off. So that all we're running at that point is off of DC power. So now my Macintosh is running off its battery. My iPad's running. I guess off its battery. Um, all the lights are running off its battery. And what we should start to see is the watt consumption drop drastically. We should see about 100 watts is what I typically see. And again, to address your the question specifically, 
how long can I go on DC mode? I'm going to hit the back button here on the app. And um, there's something wonky going on with this app because uh, you can see what, um, if you look closely in the upper right, left-hand corner, apparently my iPad thinks it's Tuesday, January 9th at 9.41 a.m. I'm seeing this only in the Volta app. So I'm afraid to say that the one day in DC mode only is not accurate. I noticed this yesterday at my Volta training at um, North Trail RV. What this should say under the Volta gauge with a 64% battery, I sh it should say two days, maybe even three. And if I was at a 80, 85% state of charge, it would show three days running off direct current. So there's something kind of wonky with this app, having it plugged in, running quick time to show you this demo. So I apologize for that, but I've done this dozens and dozens and dozens of times over the three years now living in my van. So I know what it should say. I apologize, it's not showing you that exactly. But I think you kind of get the point, right? So with DC power, just to round this out and we'll close out. So running off direct current only, I can sit still anywhere from three to five days. And if I need to put some juice in, I put a little juice in by running a charge on demand, maybe drive it for an hour and then come back. And the difference is I am good to go probably for um, another day, really. The um, When you're running air conditioning, um, you're putting juice in um, faster than you're taking it out by running some charge on demand sessions, one, two, maybe three in a day, or driving around a little bit, and you're good to go. I run the AC 24 seven with the compressor on about a 30% cycle, and um, been pretty cool and comfy in here with the cat in Florida endless summer. So Pam, I hope that answers your question, and thank you for walking through that with me. I know it's a little bit of a nosebleed on science, but um, next time we get together, we're going to do some demos on this stuff. I do the demos for the, um, the Winnebago dealers that I train for, for Volta, and even them are like, what? So you have to kind of see it in action to really fully understand it. Uh, hopefully this was a little bit of a help for you, but I think the guy is completely wrong that you do not need a generator to boondock. In fact, if you have to run the AC, it's going to drive you nuts and everybody around you because you would have to run your AC or your generator 24-7 to do what I can do in just um, two or three hours. All right. Whew. <laughs> Maybe we speed up Libation Live tonight. I don't know. Okay. Let's look for some questions. Again, thank you for that. I just, um, if you found something useful in that, hopefully you did, uh, give that a thumb up. Uh, let's shift gears. Uh, let's shift screens. And um, uh, right here, there we go. Sorry about that. Yeah, there we go. Thumb up. If you um, if, if you got something out of that, enjoy that. Maybe just a little bit more clear um, on that topic. Uh, it would be great. Um, oh, we got Pam in the house tonight. This is great. So we can see if we hit her mark. Let me take that off screen. Um, wow, you guys have got a lot of questions tonight. This is great. I appreciate this. Um, let's see. Uh, April, we talked about Fairbanks, Alaska, LED headlights, San Antonio, I'm getting close. And um, uh, Kathy made it on time for charge, for change. Um, Kathy is one amazing gal. Oh my gosh. Uh, let me tell you, Kathy Sub, you are uh, you are something else. We need to get you a trophy. Um, wants to know, uh, any Marina boondock parking? I scan those signs a lot and I haven't done it. A lot of them say no overnight parking, but there are boat tra uh, trucks with boat trailers with empty uh, boats that kind of park all night. Um, so I don't know. I, I haven't tried it myself. I would love to know where to go. Um, I've been to some some beachy type areas where you can boondock overnight. Uh, one is the um, Skyway Bridge uh, near uh, St. Petersburg, Florida. Done that, and that is great. Um, but I need to try that. Um, although I tell you, I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm such a weirdo in the uh, RV community. The beach is cool, but I'm not a big water guy. And it's such a pain to get the sand out of the van, especially if it's windy. Um, I kind of don't even go to the beach anymore because it's not as fun. I was there just uh, for a few hours yesterday. Um, and it just reminded me of every time you get in the van, get out, there's sand everywhere. And the, the wind comes up and it blows in. And I whine about the ridiculous, most ridiculous things, right? <laughs> Um, yeah, Clearwater uh, has got some beautiful, uh, in Fort DeSoto, beautiful sands like cornstarch, uh, some of those on the Gulf side. Suwannee, Georgia, so exciting. Dave's got a question here. Uh, have you had a Somo Springs installed on your rig? If so, do you like them? Thoughts? Uh, awesome question, 
David, and I do have Sumo Springs, kind of two sets. I put on a set of, let me turn on my inverter. It's going to be, hey, hold on, folks. What, what? Microwave beep. And from the AC, from the app, please hold. <laughs> it's hot out. And um, I've had two sets. Uh, one set I installed myself, and the other set I um, had put on by off-highway vans that lifted the van in Salt Lake City. So let me quickly tell you kind of what the deal was. So um, bought it, didn't have it, saw some videos from YouTubers about it, and it and it did sway, the van swayed quite a bit. I wanted a stiffer ride, less sway. Uh, so I put on what turned out to be the medium squishiness. There's a soft, a medium, then a really hard. Uh, and they were, performed really well. They made a big difference. When I lifted the van, they took both of the sets off, so front and back, front and rear, um, and they put the more firm, the firmest, on the back. The front currently has none. Because of the lift and the way the van weight is in the back, they want to kind of even that out and give a little more support, I'll call it, to the rear where the battery is, all the tanks, the gasoline, all that is in the back. So the van was kind of you know, riding high on the front. I didn't like the look, number one. And um, when I had the entire job done, um, the steering was really, uh, really nice on the front, but um, it swayed again. And I'm like, let's go put the sumos in. So I took it back the next day and they put the sumos uh, in, as they said. So I would recommend them for sure. Now, Winnebago includes them for you know, standard equipment, which is like, yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, Van Liberty says the um, Airbnb we have is legit. Um, it's pretty cool. It turned out really nice. Thank you. We'll have Van Camp there next year uh, again. So uh, here's Mattress King coming in the house tonight. My internet is slow, it looks like, uh, from New York City. Going to be coming to New York. I'm really excited doing the uh, East Coast this time. Here's Todd in Fairbanks. Awesome. Good to see you. So this uh, is a good question here, Sparks Guy. How many amp hours is your Volta system? 600. Um, here's the deal. To the best of my knowledge, um, Watts is a better measurement because people understand watts. My hair dryer takes 1,600 watts. My microwave takes 1,200 watts. My air conditioner takes 1,200 watts. My drip coffee maker takes 150 watts. For some reason, some in the RV community measure everything in amps. Most people, including me, don't know what in the hell an amp is. Um, and to confuse things further, the Volta system is a 48-volt system. The other guys, to my knowledge, I might be wrong on this, is a 12-volt. So when they talk in, in amp hours, it's you got to do some math. So my understanding is um, you times it by 12 to get the watt hours on a 12 volt system. So um, uh, most of like mine, um, I don't want to do the math on the fly. You can do that. But um, I don't know the exact amp hours um, because I measure everything in watts. The new Travados come in with 9,600 watts and the Storyteller and the Tiffin uh, Cahaba comes with over 13,000 um, watt hours in the storage pack. So we'd have to do a math lesson on that. I don't want to do it on the fly and get it wrong. Maybe somebody's way smarter than me. I live in a van, um, but I'm not good at math at all. Uh, so maybe somebody can help us out. But um, uh, with that question, um, I know Richard's out there. He's probably got that answer queued up. So if you can pop it in the chat, Richard, that, or uh, Roger, that would be uh, that'd be awesome. Good question. So that's why I do everything in watts, because people understand watts. I don't know why the other guys do everything in amps, because I don't know why. To confuse people, all people really want to know is how long can I do something, right? Uh, Van Liberty's got a question here. Have you considered a 12-volt air conditioner? Um, no, because my system is kind of as it is. Um, Truma, we learned uh, last week, they were the guest, that a Truma air conditioner actually would not fit in my Travado. They're too wide. And I would have to cut my bathroom wall by a couple inches to get that bad boy in here. So I'm sticking with what I got. Um, but I know uh, MSC RV is big on 12 volt. And um, there's probably a whole lot of science and, and research needs to be done on best units right there. But um, I'm really happy with my Coleman Mach 3 NDQ. Um, so thank you for that. So here's um, Jane. Roger uh, did uh, eight day, seven nights, um, air venture, not moving, doing man to charge twice, once or 20 minutes, level. Is, yeah, so if you read that, that's kind of the way we roll with a Volta system. You sit 
Now, when you need to put some juice in, you run the thing for an hour, and that's all. It makes noise for an hour, and then you are charging up your battery enough to run for many, many, many hours, even days. So uh, that is pretty impressive. I think you guys have the bit bigger battery. So 9,600 watts is what's standard now. Mine was 8,600. So that's probably where we're getting a little bump there. Great point. Thank you for pointing that out, um, Raj. Help us with the amps, man. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, Pam, right here. Pam, thanks. I asked the original question. This helps. How much gas do you use uh, not driving and charging the battery? It's pretty negligible. Um, you know, the engine's running about 1500 RPMs, but there's no load on it. So it's not really consuming. Um, next time I'll look when I'm running one to see what my instant MPG miles per gallon says, if it says anything, the vehicle might be, need to be in motion for that to come up again, because there's no load on the engine. The only load would be the second alternator. Um, so, it, you know, it will certainly consume gasoline because you're running an engine 1500 RPMs for an hour, but, um, it's pretty, pretty nil really. Uh, but I'm so glad, so glad you asked the question because it's 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 an important question, and there's this generator versus the lithium, and there's this unwinding of it that, that I think needs to be done. I'm trying to do a good job. Um, it's much better in person. So when we get together for some roundups, I'll do some of these demos for you guys, and hopefully you'll understand it and gals. Uh, but thanks for asking the question. Appreciate that. Um, why are we doing it on time? 7:30. Oh. So at 7.30, we're doing uh, Van Place. Oh, you guys will love this. Thank you, Al. So here's Dave. I'm looking for questions. Um, says, hi, Scott and all. In month three of our open and open-ended and trip in our 22K, 2000, so it's a Winnebago 2022 uh, 59K. Head to Wilmington, North Carolina tomorrow. Oh, that is so great. I can't wait to get into the Carolinas. I, it took everything I do not to change my plans to go back to the Southwest, but I've just got to go to new places and uh, there's so much history on the east coast um i'm so excited so uh wilmington may be on my list i'm not sure oh my gosh van liberty you are so true now you got a really well insulated embassy rv sir um so um i can tell you i live in a tin can with very little insulation in it and um it makes all the difference of being in the shade or not um i've told the story many times that um, i was at a koa plugged in shore power AC running, compressor on 24 hours, and um, 7 a.m. It was nice and cool in here, about 72 degrees. By 2 p.m., it was 91 degrees in the van. Why? I was not in the shade. I was fully baked in the sunlight with very little uh, insulation. So you're right. Stay out of the shade. It makes a dramatic difference on your battery consumption. Jason, this is a good question. I don't know. I haven't experienced a gas generator. Um, his question is, any idea how much a gas generator uses with the AC running uh, one gallon per 10 hours or so? There's probably something on the internet about that. Maybe somebody that's um, got access to that fast can look that up for us. Um, I personally don't know. Um, I don't run a generator, thankfully. Interesting question, though. Oh, here's Kathy. This thing's about half a gallon to run the generator for um, 10 hours. Um, so I might use, you know, a half gallon to run one hour to do, you know, put 30% energy in the battery. Kelly's like, science is good. <laughs> Can't man do. Uh, thanks time to measure and, and present your findings. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I stay away with, with, from anything with math problems, mathematics, fractions. Um, uh, this is kind of funny. Maybe I'll show this next week. Um, um, my, my dad went through some old family um, shoe boxes of pictures and stuff. He sent me my report card from the Catholic school in Boise, Idaho, my first, second, and third grade. First grade, I got really good marks in math. Second and third, I went from A to C minus. So this is something that's been in my brain for a long time. I am no good at math. Do not rely on me. Oh, no. Stephen's saying that they stopped overnight camping, parking in a large chunk of the Skyway Bridge area. That sucks. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised because many of those people were making it a permanent residence and not very respectful to the environment. So I'm not surprised. That's why I see these people doing what they do. It just irritates the crap out of me. And I almost want to go over and knock on their door and say, you know, you're ruining it for us all. Um, even some of these folks rolling into these cracker barrels, which we will answer that in just a second. Yeah, Kathy's confirming this. Now a three-hour limit. That is such, such a bummer. Oh, that's really sad. It was really a cool place. 
And Steve also wants to know now the four module Volta trying to get some more juice um, for less time charging in between. Absolutely true. So if you are in the market and the Winnebago Travado Volta equipped is on your radar, um, you have to have your dealer make that an option that you check the box. It's about five grand to get the fourth module loaded in your battery pack. Mine has three. The Storyteller has four. The Tiffin Cahaba has four. The National Park Edition Travados had four. Um, you cannot add that after you've taken delivery, even at time of order. You need to do it at the time of ordering, unless the dealer has ordered the Travado with four modules in the in the pack. And I would spend the five thousand in a second because um, it just reduces you get more of everything and less charging time. If that makes any sense. Okay, let's look at this quick. Keep the questions coming. This is a great conversation. I just love this. You all are awesome. Let me take that off. Okay, so what I want to do is shift gears to um, looking off screen. Um, oh, let's do this fast. We'll do survey says. You guys like these survey says? I got two questions a week going out. Um, I found a book of questions. I thought it was kind of clever, so I thought I would pose questions to you. Let's look at this. Survey says. Everybody knows Richard Dawson, right? If you're over 40. Such a handsome devil. And he kissed everything that moved. <laughs> okay, question number one. Um, traveling in your camper van, would you rather visit a history museum, 16%, visit an amusement park, 11%, I was really pleased to see this, visit a historical site such as a battlefield to feel the real. And that is one reason I am super excited to get on the East Coast, so much Civil War history, and those are the kind of videos I'm going to capture, promise, and do them short. But I think that this is the reason uh, why people want to get vans. Let's keep going. So I'm really, and that was th over 300 votes. Next, in your RV travels, would you rather visit? You only give me five options, ladies and gentlemen, for, for things here. So uh, YouTube on the polling. California, 41%. Oklahoma, 5%. Texas, 21%. New York, 4%. Tennessee, 31%. And for some reason, some viewers found this to be a political thing. I don't know what's political about any of that. Um, I was a little curious to see California up there so far. Um, not so, I was really pleased to see Tennessee in this position. Um, New York was kind of a curious curiosity to me that it was so low. Um, so I'm excited to get to, into New York and we'll find out what, what that's kind of about, right? Let's keep going. Thinking about your RV travels, would you rather be bored at the lion's share or be too busy? Uh, that's my problem. Um, that just came out um, yesterday, I think. So not a ton of votes on that yet, but uh, the trend is certainly there. Uh, I cannot wait to get to the point of being bored. I am so busy. Uh, now that I'm in my van full time, no more um, uh, Airbnb stuff. Uh, that will really, really help me. So I'm really excited about that. But uh, I'm going to start posting these polls on my website so you can take a look at these. Um, okay, let's talk about van plates because this is just one of the greatest things. Um, and let me zoom in here for you. Um, this is kind of an interesting one tonight. Um, it's a Cracker Barrel. Yeah, it's a Cracker Barrel. What makes this one special is a couple things. Number one, it's really close to an urban center uh, downtown Fort Myers. It's literally like 15 minutes. And there's three in the area. So this is my point specifically. The Cracker Barrel that, in my opinion, is really nice is one where the blue dot is. This is where the Blue Arrow is. It's on Boatways Road. And what makes this special is this. Typically, when you roll into a Cracker Barrel, this is what we see. It's behind the store. There's a, you know, some RVs back there. And that's where everybody has to gather for the night. Hopefully not living back there. But what makes this one unique is this is kind of looking northeast. And if I turn to my right and look due south, I see this. And this is a hidden little little part of the parking lot back here. So I'm going to walk toward my van. So you see a big Class A there and then somebody converting a, um, what is it, like, a, like a, a trailer, right? Like to put garden stuff in. I don't know. Um, there's Lily in the back. In the back, under the light, in the shade, in the privacy. Look at this. And it was just the most delightful place. This is my third time staying in this uh, Cracker Barrel parking lot, and I sought it out specifically because I remember how awesome it was, and I just wanted to share this with you, because if you're in the area, it just makes all the difference by being 
in, in some privacy and shade away from everybody else. For me, that's the way I like to roll, maybe not you. And this parking lot provides that. And I always go into a Cracker Barrel and I buy even the cheapest meal. There's three or four that I like. I go spend money there. I thank the waitress. I thank the hostess. I thank the cashier. If I can find the manager, I thank them for letting our VR stay in their parking lot. Because I'll promise you, a steak dinner, somebody is going to ruin this for us like Walmart's been ruined for many of us. Um, these guys are – Cracker Barrel is a great um, host of RVers. And a lot of these people I see park and never even go into the store. And, you know, they're hosting us for the night. Go spend $8 on their chicken and dumplings. It's pretty okay. <laughs> or buy a scrambled egg, anything. Um, but when you're in the Fort Myers area, go hit this uh, Cracker Barrel. You will not be disappointed. Uh, follow my lead on that, please. Um, it's just really great. Um, hey, if you're getting anything out tonight, I sure appreciate a thumb up. I feel a little discombobulated. Hopefully it's coming through okay for you. Um, let's see if we can find a few more questions. And then we're going to hit Libation Live in just four minutes. And boy, I'm ready for some back boxed wine. Um, oh, Ryan, thank you for this. Uh, so Ryan Burr, a longtime viewer. Congratulations on 3 million views. Yeah, that's a pretty big milestone. Um, YouTube doesn't send anything, but um, that's a pretty, that's a lot of videos. I have well over 400 videos now. I'm actually you know, meeting with a YouTube channel consultant on, um, I think, tomorrow uh, to talk about my channel. What can I do to uh, increase uh, growth, re do better storytelling? I don't know what it is, but thank you, Ryan, for that. Uh, I'm all about that. One second here. Drink water. And thank you um, again for that. Shout out. Appreciate that. Now, we're almost at 20,000 subscribers, which is pretty awesome. Uh, Gary's kind of confirming here the 2022 Travis Como Sumos. Yes. Uh, look at this. Rich to my rescue. 9,600 watts at 12 volts would be 800 amp hours. So I am uh, probably like, what, 700 with my 8,600 watt uh, battery, but the new Travato has come with 9,600. So thank you for that uh, amp hours. And by the way, when I'm driving at highway speeds, what makes Volta so different than the other guys is how fast it charges. This is part of my demo during my Volta training. At 70 miles an hour, I'm driving about 2,500 RPMs. And I'm putting nine, between six, seven, really seven to 9,000 hours or watts into that battery um, driving at highway speeds. It's amazing. Um, fastest charging lithium system on the market. Thank you, Volta. Uh, looking for some questions here. Uh, so we talked about the um, generator a little bit. So JK House here says, um, other issue with the generator is maintenance. Must exercise to prevent issues. Must do oil changes. Uh, not required with lithium, which is true. Uh, it's a second, really, internal combustion engine on board. So treat it kindly. Um, and uh, Steve's uh, confirming here, too much sun on the van and uh, AC cannot keep up. And uh, Don't even think you can charge your battery to run AC using solar. Can't do it. I think it's it's a not it's not a divisible it's a multiplication chain, so I think Rich was closer, but uh, yeah. So Gary's kind of right here. So as we've talked about going off grid, what you're going to run out of first, from my experience, is not really electricity because if you're not using the AC a lot, and or you have a lot of gasoline and you're willing to put in two or three charge on demands in a 24 hour period, that is not going to be a problem. It's going to be fresh water unless you have access to that. Um, I've got uh, about 18 gallons on board in the tank on the van, and I got another five gallons, six gallons stored uh, inside the van fridge and in the garage storage. So you're going to run out of water way before you run out of electricity. So I think you're right on that. And I'm not one to go be using the toilet in the in the woods with a shovel or a bucket. So um, you guys are great. Look at this. So according to the Onan, which is the uh, generator manufacturer uh, that are many of these rigs um, at no load it's 0.14 gallons per hour uh, half load at 0.2 gallons and it is a half a gallon at full load running your air conditioner so if you're running your AC like I've been doing you're you're burning up a half a gallon an hour I'm pretty sure I'm taking less I'm not 100% sure about that but Gary has some great question I get this question a lot is Alaska in your sights um, I'm pretty sure you'll never see Go Small, Live Large 
in the van in Alaska. I might take an Alaska cruise, a uh, van parked in Seattle. I just have no interest in going to Alaska. I'm an urban cowboy, and it is not worth the drive for me to get there to go see some bears and woods and moose. And I'll go fly to you know Anchorage and check it out maybe, but I just have no interest in going to Alaska. Uh, many people do. Big bucket list. Uh, looking at moose running around, not for me. Yeah, this is so right, Sparks. Uh, more Revolutionary War history north of Maryland. I'm just so excited. I've actually been watching the Civil War um, documentary by Ken Burns to kind of spin me up on this um, whole topic. So uh, where are we at? Oh, my God, it's Libation Live. I'm so need of this. It's been a very long couple of days. Um, so let's uh, hold that. Uh, great point, Sparks. Thank you for that. Let's shift gears, boys and girls, because at that time of day, I need to get a bell. Um, uh, it's Libation Live. Okay, so here's my deal on the on the. And I'm kind of serious about this actually. Um, what makes this special boxed wine is it. And there's a couple flavors. There's a lot of. I actually prefer the Costco brand. Um, it's less expensive. But the big deal is here is right here. Can you see that? Four bottles of wine in a box. So to me, it's all about the storage capacity, the convenience. Are you ready for this? My box. Oh no! Don't tell me I didn't put it in there. Oh no! I had a picture. I took a picture of my box of wine. It sits on my Luke shelf, as some of you call it. Um, there was two shelves in my Travado back there. One was a Luke shelf. Let me see if I can get this off off screen. And then a little bit lower shelf. The lower shelf holds the box of wine perfectly. I can put the bed down and never squish the box of wine. On the Luke shelf, the higher one, I'd have to lay it down, uh, but it stands up perfectly next to my home pod. Okay, and now Tuxedo decided it's time for Werewolf Hour. Okay, so here's my box. Yeah, this is very unglamorous tonight. I apologize, but uh, I'm using my fancy glass from uh, Warsaw, Indiana. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching tonight. Great show tonight. Great crowd. Great conversation. Hmm. That's not, it's room temperature, so I do everything wrong. Oh, there's Tuxedo making an appearance. Want to come say hi? Okay. He's been chewing my plant. Come here. Come here. Tuxedo. Come here. Come here. Tuxedo. You're being coy. The camera's on. Come here. Tuxedo, D. <laughs> I like to just pull on my plant. Not cool. Okay. A good question here, Mark Williams. So with the auto start and or driving to charge, the system, as long as I have gasoline, I'm wondering if the three pack volt is good as four pack, uh, all with the air conditioner on. Um, if you have the option to buy it with four, get four. You will not be sorry. It's five grand in the whole scheme of things. It's pennies. And it lets you do more sitting still, less charging. Um, driving is the fastest way to charge. And... Um, and you need to have at least a quarter tank of gas. You can't really fill your battery sitting still. Uh, the way it works is um, it kicks on. So if you're on auto start mode, um, where it's set to turn the engine on when it de discharges to a certain level, um, it's kind of all over the board. But I see it typically kick on around 20, maybe 30% uh, stay of charge. So 30% remaining in the battery. It starts, runs for an hour, puts about 30% in, stops. So now you went from 30 to 60%. And then it turns off, and then it discharges back to 30%. And it does that until you have gasoline down to one quarter of a tank. Uh, so that's how auto start works. Um, charge on demand is kind of similar but different. You actually put energy in um, on your place and time. That's why I like it better. Tuxedo, want to come say hello? Come here. Come here. Come here. I know. Come say hello to the folks. They want to see you. Oh, there he is. He is really taking a shine to this. i got to tell you. It's just that time of day for werewolf hour. Isn't he the cutest thing? He's so good about being held. You see his little name tag here thing, right? I'm just going to show you. I don't think I throw a broom up. It says, hello, my name is Tuxedo. <laughs> He's like, okay, it's time to go for a walk. I know, show's almost over, sir. Um, let's see, good questions. Uh, so Captain Mandu says, regarding the East Coast, depending on how east you go, uh, you can do a lighthouse tour. There's at least six, seven North Carolina along on the shoreline. Other banks, most are accessible by road or ferry. I'm really, I'm going to try and stay really inland unless there's something really compelling. 
or uh, on the on the shore, unless there's something really compelling on the inland. I don't want to get too far inland. Then have to backtrack. Um, I've never done the shore on on the East Coast um, in any means, really. I've driven the um, California coast, Oregon coast, Washington coast. Uh, so this would be the first time. So I really want to try and do that. I have a love hate relationship with lighthouses. OMG. Um, I had this vertigo claustrophobia thing, and I can barely get up the first three sets of stairs. I love looking at them. I hate being on top looking down. I cannot start, I climb the stairs. So we'll probably do some videos from the bottom of. Uh, uh, yeah, Gary's got a good point here. He can carry two seven gallons of uh, water under his uh, a 59G dining table, which is what the laptop is sitting on tonight. There is tons of storage in the 59G. If you haven't seen my garage storage video, I'm a little shocked it didn't do better. It's amazing to me how much storage the 59G floor plan allows. It's stunning. It's stunning. Um, and get, if you're looking shopping for a camp chair, you want to come say hello again? See how he's all fired up. Um, get that new camp chair. Again, shout out to Teresa from Frisco, Texas. Uh, turn me onto the uh, Pico armchair. And it's just been the greatest of here. I mean, you sit here and we look at questions, sir. Uh, but yeah, there's just so much storage in this floor plan. Um, as I walk around the, um, well, uh, okay. Let's see. So Jane, I think she did the math here for us. Uh, again, so this is, this is the magic formula. Thank you, Jane. Um, let you guys read that. Uh, to me, it looks like Greek. <laughs> That's why I just like stick with the watts. Oh, wow. You stayed here. Yeah, it's a great one, right? The staff was good. The staffing in some of these is so interesting. Um, okay, looking for a couple more questions. Uh, Van Liber says, um, consulting is a great idea. I'm actually going to have a free consultation with somebody. Help me coach me on my YouTube channel. I think it should be much uh, larger than it is, so I'm doing something wrong. Um, and now that I'm back on the road full time, I'm mapping out stuff uh, significantly better. Um, it's starting with Route 66, right? Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's just, I, I agree. I'm glad to see you guys are supporting Cracker Barrel. Um, I just hope nobody ruins it for us. Um, and I, I hate to be judgmental. But when I see these jalopies rolling in that are duct taped together, literally a, a, a residential window air conditioner hanging out on some plywood with bailing wire, you know, I kind of get it. But when there's three or four of them and they got a bunch of dogs and, and they're kind of hanging out, uh, I roll in, you know, four or five in the afternoon, eat, thank them all, go to my van. And I'm out of there by six, seven a.m. And they have not gone inside to do anything. Maybe use the restroom even worse. Um, and they're just kind of hanging out. I just, it just, it's, they're going to, they're going to ruin it. And I hate to be judgmental, but um, they're going to ruin it for us. Um, what do you think more importantly? Um, and then you're forced into parks and, and all these things. Um, oh yeah. Sparks guy. This is a great point. I so love history. I'm so excited to do the East coast. You get, guys are getting me excited about this. I was, kind of uh, really toying with scrapping it and going back where I'm a cowboy. Uh, now I can be a cowboy, I guess, in uh, Philadelphia, uh, which I've been to many times, but not in the van. So yeah, Ken Burns got a new movie next week, right? On Ben Franklin. I so admire that guy. I read a number of his um, autobiographies and books about him. And I just love everything that Ken Burns does. He does it so well. What a great mentor for storytelling. What do you think? Um, he was probably the genius, like I say, that held the, the founders together. He was never the president, but he was so influential on so many things and did so many things right. Um, yeah, um, I've been to his grave, Benjamin Franklin. I've been to where his house used to be, seen the Liberty Bell. Um, got a cute story with the Liberty Bell. Um, I have been there many times um, when I was working for Apple and even afterwards. I took Kyle there. Every time I get there, if you've been to Liberty Bell, um, you go through this big exhibit, then there's the bell at the end. Um, kind of this big reveal moment, right? And I was I get choked up every time I see the thing and, and things like it. It just makes it just moves me. And um, I brought Kyle there for the first time, and he didn't want to 
you know, all this history stuff. I just got time. Let's just go see the darn bell. So I'm kind of like, oh, okay, but you got to do this. And I said, where's the bell? We get to the end and it's, you know, it's illuminated from behind from the daylight. You see through this big glass boxy thing. And um, he goes, I'm like, what do you think? It's the Liberty Bell. You're standing in front of it. It's a really big bell. And by the way, it's cracked. <laughs> so to this day, um, everything everything that reverts back to it's just a big bell uh, for, for, for some. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, I, I, it would be cool to street camp in Center City, right? Oh, my God. There's so many great restaurants down there. Um, and he just used his litter box, so it smells awesome in here. <laughs> um, uh, Kathy wants to know... Uh, yeah, he's, he he likes to rub, he likes to hold my hand. It's the cutest thing. He's just a great cat. Uh, and would you consider the Blue Ridge Parkway? Not familiar with. I need to do some homework. I'm up to about um, a little past um, Charleston on my route planning, so I got a lot to go. Some of this depends on Winnebago dealers that I'm going to go train. But um, so if you guys got uh, places to go, be sure and hit me up. Uh oh. Yeah, he's a great cat, and uh, this is the time of night he wants to go for a walk. He's doing pretty good on his leash. Um, he's doing really well on his leash. I'm happy to report that. <laughs> I have four-pack envy. Dude, I have six-pack envy. I haven't got to get to the gym. I've managed to lose 10 pounds over the last month or so, but... Um, uh, Mark Williams says, uh, yes, Travato storage, uh, G-Storage is awesome. We have the K, we have the Pico chairs uh, to create the service space too. Yeah, I was shocked at how one chair, oh, two chairs fit in the space of one. Uh, I'm just so glad that um, she turned it on to me, um, Teresa. So cheers, everybody, to, uh, uh-oh. You go outside? <laughs> that time of day. Um all right, folks, we're going to wind this down. Thank you for joining. We had a great crowd, as always. Great questions, great comments back and forth. I'm just really excited. This is my fifth day of being on the road, fifth day, full-time, and I'm still getting my head wrapped around, not returning to Florida for at least a year, uh, well, holidays or something like that. And um, I'm just so excited for the road ahead for you, uh, for me, for us being on this journey together. It's just the greatest thing. So. I'm going to roll back into my friend's uh, house a couple miles away. We're street camping tonight, me and the cat. The stay of charge is at 55%, so I will put a one-hour um, charge on demand into the energy, into the battery when I get there, and that will last us plenty of nights. We had to run AC all night tonight probably just because it's um, it's still pretty warm here. Um, so it's that. We say thank you again, and thumb up if you got something out of it, and we'll see you next Wednesday. We'll see you on the small screen. A uh, new video on, I think, Friday, certainly on Sunday. You might like it. Watch for that. Until we see you soon, 